the first day. I'm really excited about this. Um, I have got three days off work. I've got stuff to do on the mon Monday, today, this morning and tomorrow morning. But Wednesday, I've got the whole day to myself. I'm going to try to read as many books as I can. Um, I'm really disappointed because we had so many people around our house this weekend. And I wanted to finish um, at least three of my books. And then I didn't. I only got one. And then I'm halfway through Sundial. Um, yeah. So we will see what's going on. So this morning I have... That's my table that's in the lounge. <laughs> because I'm going to take you over here and show you... This is where I think I did my first video in this room. Oh, listen to that echo. Yeah, I did my first ever video in that corner. But today we're having some people come to put new doors here. If you can see this, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, look at those streaks that are going down it. That's inside, like between the double glazing panes because this window is like 40 years old and the double glazing has failed and there's just condensation that comes between these panes so you can't see out here in the mornings and we are finally gonna get them replaced and I'm so excited. Uh, so this is the before and I'll show you the after. They're supposed to come between 8.30 and 9. So I've set the dogs and me up in the kitchen, a little zone to chill out. I'm gonna take some painkillers because I've just had my breakfast. Then I'm gonna read until the guys show up and then I'm gonna probably hide in my kitchen. Um, Cause I'm shy. <laughs> and I'm anxious. <laughs> okay, actually, I was like, oh, let me explain that. I might explain this. I might not keep this in the video. I probably won't. But basically, so this is the color that we wanna paint the wall on the bottom and on the top, we're gonna to put this wallpaper it's like called incantation by mind the gap it's basically got a bunch of like mythic beasts on it this one's so spooky it reminds me of uh, like a little bit of like medieval a little bit japanese um but it's like a big print i might put it like on the screen what the big print looks like i love it it's just spooky like i want this room to be kind of movie and a little bit spooky but then having this open will be like a nice relief and then we've got some curtains um, that we bought this weekend when my mom came up. She took us to go buy some curtains, so we are going to uh, put those up today. Probably. Yes, because it's going to be annoying. Look how nice it looks out there. Look at my weeping willow. That's Mama Willow out there. We love Mama Willow. And I'm so excited to be able to see her all the time without this horrible condensation on the, on the door. Bye-bye this. Bye bye, this. I'm gonna do a big reveal because it's been done and I came outside and locked the gate and I just looked back at my house and was like, oh my God, do I have a beautiful home? Um, how has this happened? Look at this. I can't believe it. It's mega, it's mega, mega. Oh my God, look. <sighs> Sorry. I'm just so busy living in my beautiful home with my beautiful new doors that I bought. Ah! Okay, well, I'm going to show you from the inside as well. Oh, hello, we're just coming inside. Hello, beautiful dog. Hello, beautiful dog. Hello, gorgeous dogs. Let's go in. Let's go in. Here they are in all their glory. Oh, I love them so much. I'm so happy. And you can actually see the view. Oh, my God. And now, like, you can see the beautiful willow. Okay, so update. I have been reading this. I think I'm about three quarters. Yeah. I've got about, like, 70 pages left in it. It's good. I think I know how it's going to end. Um, or at least I know, like, what the mystery in the middle is. I bet... I'm not sure uh, if I know the ending, but I definitely know like what's like the twist, but maybe there's going to be a twist on the twist because I feel like it's been telegraphed pretty heavily. So maybe she wants you to think that you know the twist, but you don't actually know it, but I think I do anyway. So um, 
I have decided because it's a nice day and it has been raining really awfully for a couple weeks, I'm going to take a little break from reading and I'm going to go outside and do some gardening. I'm not going to take you with me because that's not going to be interesting. I'm literally just pulling grass out of the meadow before I put new <laughs> seeds in instead. Um, and I might plant a rose. If I do plant the rose, I might film that, but I don't know if I'm going to. So, see you for now. Bye. Okay, I'm back inside. I have just, hey, hello. I just spent the last like two and a half, three hours in the garden uh, listening to Respect the Dead and Behind the Bastards. And uh, I picked all the bad, all the rye grass out of the meadow site. And then I weeded all the dandelions. So it's ready now to be reseeded. I'm really excited. Um, and before I like lay down, I wanna have a nap, but I'm like, uh, I shouldn't probably, cause I really wanna finish um, like slip stitching the, the curtain panels together, ready to hang out this evening. Um, and then I'm gonna finish my book after that and maybe then have like a big yummy roast dinner. Um, I am really happy with how I spent the first day of my holiday. I thought that I would be disappointed because I thought I was gonna read all day and I haven't been reading for most of the day. Hi, oh my gosh, you children. And I haven't been reading for most of the day, but I've really just enjoyed like being outside and like not having pressure to like get back inside hurriedly because like my lunch break's gonna be over soon or I need to go and like do someone's dinner or something. So it's really nice. Um, I'm really happy. Um, it's just a really lovely slow day. So that's that. I, if I finish the book, I will update with my thoughts on it and if my predictions were correct for what's gonna happen later. Um, and other than that, I don't know if I'll film again today. You might just see me again tomorrow uh, with updates on the new book because I'm also going to go to the library on my way back from the hospital and I'm going to pick up uh, three more books that I reserved that are ready to collect. So hopefully I'll take two finished ones back and bring three home. Um, and then I'll decide which of those I'm going to read next. I am back uh, from the hospital. I'm just gonna kneel. I'm back from the hospital. It's really hot, so I'm gonna take this off. Uh, I'm back from the hospital and the library. First time on the tram. It was nice. Um, I forgot how nice it is to just be able to leave your house and then go somewhere and not have to go in a car and just basically be like completely sort of independent in traveling because it's been such a long time since I lived somewhere where I didn't need a car to get everywhere. Um, so that was actually a really nice, like, yeah, it does take you longer than when you can just drive everywhere, but it's so nice to like, just do whatever you want and not have to deal with traffic. Um, so yeah, so I did not have breakfast before I left. So I'm gonna have brunch-ish, I'm gonna have pancakes. And then it's actually supposed to be sunny all day, which is crazy. Like the rain is finally stopped, yay. So I'm going to probably go outside and seed my wildflower meadow and then just put up my hammock and lay in it and read because I feel like this is a perfect day for that. I don't have any uh, berries left, so I'm gonna have apples. So I'm gonna do cinnamon apple pancakes and then go outside. We're excited. <laughs> Okay, I thought I would discuss Sundial because that's the thing I read, the book I finished last night. Um, but I also need to sew these curtains so we can put them up today. So I'm going to just be whip stitching my curtains uh, while I, am I whip stitching? It doesn't matter what kind of stitch I'm doing. I'm stitching them together while I talk to you about Sundial. So. Sundial is a thriller. It's by Catriona Ward. It is the story of a woman called Rob and she's got two daughters. One, her older do her oldest daughter is called Callie and her youngest is called Annie. Rob lives with her husband Irving uh, in like a beautiful suburban house. She's very proud of her house. She's worked really hard to build what she considers a beautiful life. But there are some dark secrets bubbling under the surface um, between her uh, and her relationship with Irving, but also 
uh, some of her relationships with her daughters, specifically Callie, and potentially some dark secrets from her own past that she must contend with. Um, the book, I think I'm going to give it a three out of five stars. Like it's not necessarily bad, but it wasn't as good as I was kind of hoping it was going to be considering how, um, how much, like, I felt like the thing the book did with, and this is something I've noticed books doing, um, a lot recently. I just don't know if I've just been without realizing it, picking a lot of books that do this, just hinting at, oh, I thought it was bad, but the worst was yet to come. Like, actually, to be fair, I noticed this trend in The Fireman by Joe Hill. That's what this book is. This book reminds me a lot of The Fireman by Joe Hill in that it keeps, like, the chapter ends and it's like, oh, you thought it was this, but you, if only you'd known what was coming next. Like, they literally say that in the book. And then it shows you what was coming next. But I think when something's written in that way, instead of just letting you experience it organically and go, oh my God, I thought that was bad. I had no idea what was coming. Telegraphing that something really bad or scary or whatever is about to happen, I feel like can sometimes take the sting out of it when it finally does happen because you basically spend the whole time between that announcement and the actual event guessing about what it's gonna be. And it's not as though, you know, it's only one page away. Sometimes it's 20 or 30 plus pages. And instead of paying attention and enjoying the story, you're trying to guess because they've told you, oh, something's coming up. So naturally, I feel like people want to guess what's coming next. So in terms of um, the actual story, I felt like um, there were a lot of twists. It was a very twisty turny, show me the elf kind of vibe. Um, but... All, most of the twists I kind of saw coming. Like it's it's pretty it's pretty good at kind of dropping those hints. The final twist, um, I think it could have been really amazing. I think if that final twist had been executed in a different way, I probably would have felt like the book was a four or a five. But as it stood, like the twist came, it came up. I won't say it came out of nowhere because I don't feel like it did. But it came up and I was by the point they brought it up so divested from the story that I was like because I was literally it was winding it felt like it was winding down and I was like why are we still going why is there more book you basically ended it and then it was like an epilogue it's kind of like when you watch a horror movie and you're like it's over they escaped from the house yay and then you're like wait a minute there's like 10 minutes left in this book sorry in this movie obviously the killer's not dead like what's gonna happen I'm ready for this to wrap up I've run, ridden the emotional roller coaster I've had the denouement like my heart rate is returning to normal I'm not in the mood to be scared again and then it scares you again and sometimes it really knocks it out of the park and sometimes you're like okay that was cheap that was cheap and it kind of felt a little bit cheap um I really wish that it had just just either come about a little quicker just trim some of the fluff before the end I think and I would have enjoyed it a little bit more or just spend a little bit more time with the character that is central to the twist that could have been better um mild spoilers ahead so uh five four three two one spoilers for sundial um I didn't get the thing with the contacts um so my thinking is, is the is it that um, Rob is an unreliable narrator, which she is, but so is Callie. Um, is it that it's not really, like is Rob wearing contact lenses because she's actually Jack? That's what I thought was gonna be the hint. I thought that was gonna be the twist because um, she mentions she brought a contact lens solution. She mentioned she like rubs her eyes a lot. I was like, they have different color eyes. But by that point in the book, I couldn't remember what color that Callie said adult Rob's eyes were. Um, so I couldn't recall. I was like, is it that she is actually the other sister and she's wearing contacts? Or is it that she's wearing contacts to look like the other sister because she can't look, at, she can't face herself? I don't know because I couldn't remember at that point and I've taken the book back to the library now so maybe I should google it 
Uh, but I probably won't remember to Google it because I've got a lot of stuff to do today. Uh, so yeah, that was my like one question about it. Uh, and I don't know if, if it was explained and I just missed it. Cause like I said, towards the end of the book, I was like, okay, like, let's wrap it up. I'm bored. I don't want to keep going anymore. I'm ready to leave this ride. Please release the harness so that I can go walk around the rest of the amusement park. Uh, so yeah, that's my review. Sundial, three out of five. Uh, decent book, worthwhile, fast read. So definitely, like, it's summertime. You want to read a thriller, give it a go. That's my view on that. Um, I also wanted to mention that I DNF'd a book, so I was on the way to the hospital this morning and I was reading, I was on the tram, I was reading Seeing by Jose Saramago, and I was not having a good time, and I was in the waiting room at the hospital, and I was, I really, like, I started thinking, why am I reading this book? And the reason that I was reading that book was because I, when I bought Blindness on my Kindle, it said, oh, this is number one in a series and number two is seeing. But I don't, and I don't know, I think maybe it's because I didn't get super far into the book, but it wasn't really, like it wasn't in any, in any sense, if it's set in the same universe or whatever, it's, a, it's not in any way a direct sequel to Blindness. Like as far as I got into the book, they hadn't mentioned the events of Blindness. So I was like, maybe it's like a similar kind of societal collapse thing um or maybe it's like oh yeah this is something that happened years and years ago um is this thing where everybody went blind like maybe they would say that at some point but they just hadn't as far as I got into the book but I was like why am I reading this because it's a sequel and I wanted to say that I'd read both or like I thought I would understand something more if I'd read both but I wasn't enjoying the book and then I said to myself why would I read a sequel to that book? Like, is that a world that I wanted to revisit? The world of blindness? And if I'm being honest with myself, no. No, I didn't want to go back to that world again. And I was like, well, then what is the justification for reading this book, little girl? And I was like, you know what? There isn't one because there wasn't. So when I went to the library to pick up my uh, books that I'd reserved, I returned to that one. So yeah, so reading slightly one fewer book than I intended, but honestly, I'm kind of relieved because I just wasn't liking it. I just, maybe I'll come back to it at some point, maybe in a couple years. I don't think I'll come back to it anytime soon. I think one Saramago book was enough for me this year, um, unless there's one out there with a really riveting premise and I just need to do a bit more research and find that one. But at the moment, I'm, I'm quite good on Saramago. I'm not gonna read anything else. Um, so what I decided to read, I bought 10 books from the library. Um, obviously, I'm not going to read them all in the next two days, but I am going to try to read like two of them in the next two days. And the one that I decided to read was The Return by Rachel Harrison. I don't remember who recommended this. I can't remember if it was Michaela from Michaela Reads or Brooklyn from Brooklyn's Library. But I think it was one of those two. It could be someone completely different. It could be neither of those two. But I'm reading this now. I started when I was having lunch. I'm only six pages in, but I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it's about a girl whose best friend disappears. Um, and then the rest of the, well, actually, it's a group. They're a group of them. Their best friend, Julie, has disappeared. Uh, she went hiking in a national park and she didn't come back. She married. She moved back home to Massachusetts. They all met at uni. She moved back to Massachusetts. She'd married her old high school sweetheart, like randomly, like super quick out of nowhere. They weren't even invited. She just sent them two pictures from the wedding itself. And they were like, oh my God, that's so shocking. Um, so I know that on the back, it says that she's going to go and then she's going to come back, but she's going to come back wrong, um, which is like giving me pet cemetery vibes. Uh, sometimes dead is better. I don't know what this is gonna if this is gonna be like that, but like the lady in the bathtub with the weird hand, that's giving me some kind of spooky vibe. So I hope I enjoy it. It says it's a thriller, not a horror. It's really difficult. Um, I'm finding to find like books that are actual horror. Like I keep looking in that section of my library, and it's mostly thrillers. So any recommendations for like real, true, toe curling gut 
fallen out your butt horror I would love um but yeah so that's it I'm gonna finish sewing these curtains and then I'm probably gonna just sit on the couch and read this because my back is super 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 sore from all the gardening and I kind of have a headache uh so I should probably nap but I'm not gonna nap because uh, I want to read this and I need to cook dinner too many things to do all right bye <laughs>
and how privileged you are to not have to feel that, but then the after effects of that, like how that shaped society, how does a society that was built with those attitudes ever become equal if its strategy is to bury it and pretend that it never happened, which is what she's contending with in the book at this point, like when she's looking for these women in history, there are stories of revolts, but the women are written out or they're just little footnotes. And she's like, what happened in one case, the revolt was literally led by a woman. Where is her story? So yeah, I'll see how I feel at the very, very end of it. Um, I'll see if I cry. I feel like I might cry, which is not the best way to start the day, but it's fine. I'm gonna eat my stroganoff now because it's beeping. And then I'll probably read on the sofa for the rest of it because it's cold outside. <laughs> so I, this is wedding day. This is a climbing rose. Um, it has gotten absolutely, oh, you can't see it. It has gotten absolutely massive since I bought it in May. This is insane growth. Um, I am definitely gonna end up cutting this next year uh, simply because, well, there's no flowering. It's just foliage. I don't know if I fed it too early, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I'm definitely gonna end up having to cut it next year to get it under control. It's grabbing me grab my arm. So I think I'm going to put this one in the pot because it definitely needs a home because it is eating a lot of food. Look at that. It's a little tree. Um, yeah, this is eventually going to grow up over our garage when we get the new garage because it does this. <laughs> All done. I'm gonna water the plants, but I'm gonna show you what I've done. So, I still planted with mint, lavender, chives, and a bit of lavender, and then the rosemary is in a nice pot. So, it's a cute little triptych. This is a bicycle from Amy's nan, who is no longer with us, and she loved mint, so Amy wanted mint put in there. And the rosemary is very happy here. Chive and the lavender is from Amy's mum. I've been talking and not recording anything. So I got rid of the corn chips plant that was in there. I cut it all down. It stinks. Um, and I've just set them in there. I haven't like tied them around it or anything because I realized we're going to get rid of those stumps. So it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, yeah, so that's for this bee day. Enjoying the of sunshine. And that's wedding day. Enjoying the sunshine and grabbing and touching everyone with its spiky hands. And I put the hydrangea out here. I don't think it's a good place for it but my mom told me to give it a shot and she was like just try it and see how it does I don't think there's enough sunlight out here we'll see if it actually likes it I don't think it will so I think it's probably gonna end up moved back into the back garden also I think it looks stupid here um but there's nowhere else to put it so I'm gonna try it for a few days and if we hate it I'm gonna move it back so yeah that's my potting done all of these need to be washed so they can go in the recycling and then I'm gonna water everything and then I'm gonna go read again. What a beautiful angle. Okay, I'm in my hammock again. I'm reading The Return. I'm like a third of the way through it. I'm really enjoying it. It's just starting to get going now. There's gonna be background noise. I'm not gonna do anything about that because I don't wanna go inside. <laughs> um, but I'm not gonna talk about this book. I'm gonna talk about Wake by Rebecca Hall. I read that this morning. It is really good. I'm gonna give that one 4.5 out of 5 stars. It should, like there's no reason for it not to be 5 stars, but just like I reserve like 5, you know what? No, it's gonna be 5 stars. There's no reason for it not to be 5 stars, so it should just be 5 stars. I'm like being too stingy here. Um, it's absolutely 
beautiful. It's really harrowing. It's like a difficult read. It's not like a chill, cozy vibe. It's definitely like a be ready to cry vibe. So as I said this morning, it's basically, she's a historian and she is trying to trace the history of African women and their role that they played in different slave revolts. So she's looking through a lot of like primary sources and looking through archives. And so she kind of does a like a breakdown from a historic level of the transatlantic slave trade, the different players that were involved, and then different revolts and the roles that women played in them. And then there are some bits where she kind of does what she says, like a sort of a tentative historical imagining of what the backstories of some of these women might have been because they have been erased from so much of the history. I thought it was so, so good. Um, like I said, I definitely cried. There were two chapters where she comes to England and I found those ones particularly moving as like a descendant of chattel slavery who has moved to England herself. Um, for a really long time, I've wanted to kind of do like a pilgrimage to Liverpool to see because I know that so much of the wealth in Liverpool was built on the transatlantic slave trade and there are like grotesques and motifs and stuff on buildings of like African faces. Um, and there's obviously the International Slavery Museum is in Liverpool. I kind of feel like this book has really motivated me to do that. So I might try and do that. I might do that for my birthday. That could be a fun birthday trip. If I do, I will like try to tie in books and do like a literary slash cultural Liverpool for my birthday. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I think it's a good like introduction to a topic. It made me want to read more about this topic. Um, so I do hope that Rebecca Hall writes more because she is a historian and she does work in particularly covering slavery. Uh, so I would love to read more of her work. I think she's mostly done academic work. This is her first uh, book that's not sort of an academic text. I really hope that she writes more because she's really, really good. And I'd also like to see more of Martinez's illustrations, um, more of his work. He, he specifically mentions that he writes, um, that he illustrates works talking about like the struggles of marginalized people. So I'm sure these got lots of lovely uh, illustrations to see. I definitely recommend it. So yeah, read Wake. It's good. It's worth it. And now I'm going to stop talking about it because I don't really want to spoil it. Like it's hard to go into detail. It's a graphic novel. It's not very long and so much of it is images and the images are beautiful, really impactful. And I don't really want to show them to you like too many of them. Is that grass in my hair? No, I don't want to show too many of them because I feel like it would just spoil it. I might do like, no, I, no, I'm not gonna just read it. Just read it. Request it from your library. Go to a store and buy it. I'm going to go back to reading this. Um, I might fall asleep out here. I don't mind. I'm just having a good time. All right. Okay, slightly different view of Book Corner, but I just thought, and I'm supposed to start working in like five minutes, but I've just finished The Return, so I thought I'd just jump on and do a quick review of this to like round out the vlog. Um, super good i loved this book it was so good i'm really glad that i i think it was michaela recommended this and i'm really glad that i read it because like if i'd been in the shop or something and i'd seen this cover i would not have gone for this cover because also the cover doesn't really have a lot to do with the book like i don't remember a scene in this book that involves the bathtub at all so i feel like this is a deceptive cover i feel like a picture of the woods would have been way better like a spooky woods picture i would have been like "Ooh, i'm interested in that and i would have probably picked it up because yeah her friend disappeared a stranger came back that's also like i don't know this it looks like a real sort of cheesy airport thriller but i thought this was not like that at all it was really good it was really like a lot of sort of meditation on female friendship and self-worth and your relationships and like getting sort of stuck and lost in life but also genuinely quite scary. Like I haven't been scared by a book in a while and I found this book actually did frighten me um, at several points. I was reading it at night and I was like, oh, I hope that there's nothing in the hallway. Uh, I liked the 
the monster element because it's a bit of a creature feature and like really good descriptions of like body horror in here and like just icky stuff in a way that makes you feel like you can smell the icky smells and see the icky things. Highly recommend, really fun and easy to read. I think the only reason it took me as long as it did is because I kept having to stop and do other things. And also this version of the book, like they hadn't cut the pages appropriately. So like every few pages I would have to like rip them apart. <laughs> and it's a library book. So look at the rip. Can you, that's not, it's not picking it up. It's not picking it up, but. Yeah, that's, that's torn paper because I literally had to tear these pages apart. So anyway, yeah, uh, I think it's good. I recommend it. I gave it four stars. Um, yeah, I feel like it's a really fun time to read in the summer or like summer going into autumn as the weather is changing. For some reason, this gives me like campfire vibes because like I said, a scary part of the book does take part in the woods, but also I just feel like this is a fun story. This reminds me of the kind of like, scary story you tell your friends like an abbreviated version of this you would tell your friends like out camping around a campfire and like she came back and then this happened and then this happened so yeah highly recommend really fun read um i like it a lot i definitely want to see if rachel harrison has written some other books um because i really loved her writing style i think she writes in a really fun conversational way um but also beautiful descriptions of of just everything, like really beautiful descriptions and great at writing action horror sequences. Um, and also there are just some like really poignant, pretty lines in here about life and wanting to be alive and finding meaning in your life, which I didn't really expect from a book, judging a book by its cover, a book that looks like this, you don't expect it to be what it actually is. So I wish that the cover was better because I really like it. Um, so yeah, that's my review of The Return. And that is the end of my three books that I wanted to read on my time off, just in time to get ready to go back to work. Also, I feel like I should show you something. Does that look good or what? Look at those bad boys, they are up there. Uh, the pack said that the two packs of hooks would be enough. It's not, so we need to go to the store and get more hooks, but like, it looks so nice with the new windows. And then, oh, 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 oh. And it like blacks it out and it's nice in here and it also helps keeping out the cold and the heat. The green looks super moody and gray. It's gonna look so good when we do the board and batten and the wallpaper. Also, we've got a mirror up here, so this is not as messy and looks good. And yeah, I'm really happy. And I'm gonna take my desk out of here now because I feel like it's ruining the room. So I might move my desk into the lounge. Uh, because this room is now officially too cool to also double as a home office. It should just be a spooky ooky dining room <laughs> layer. <laughs> look at this. It just ruins it though. Like imagine that ugly thing isn't there. Just look at this side of the room. Look at that side. Ooh la la. This side. Work from home life. Yeah. Boo. Anyway, I need to go eat breakfast because I have to work now. Bye.